Corner, where every week we're bringing you proof of what's possible in life. I'm your host, Havila Malone, and on this episode, we're going to be talking about how you can make your house a home. You think it's ever okay to bring in, I don't know, another wife into the picture? Well, maybe if you have a whole lot of clutter, you could consider having an occasional wife or an occasional husband. We're going to be talking with Kay Morrison about how to get your space clear and really be able to get some cash for all that extra stuff. We're also going to be talking to the HGTV stars of the new show Flipping the Block. We're going to see how the competition is going and things that you can do to improve your property value and really enjoy the space that you're living in. And of course we're going to be talking to the Habitat for Humanity about helping people live the American dream through home ownership. All of that and more right here on Inside Havilah's Corner. I'm your host, Havilah Malone, and welcome to Inside Havilah's Corner. We're here with a very special person, Miss Kay Morrison, who does something that I think a lot of us could use. Could you use an occasional wife? Yeah, or even an occasional husband. I'm sure there's things around your house that you could throw off of your plate. Maybe getting rid of clutter, maybe getting things organized. We're talking about making your house a home. Well, this is the lady who can make that happen. I mean, you have such an amazing concept that you came up with this company that you started seven years ago, The Occasional Wife. So kind of just tell me um, how it all came to pass. It came about seven years ago when I used to work for Corporate America and I lived on an airplane. My office was actually in White Plains, New York. It wasn't even in New Orleans, so I was never home. And during that time I got married and had two children and our life was just crazy busy. And one morning I was leaving to go out of town and my husband was like, where are you going? And I was like, I'm going to New York. And he was, uh, he was like, oh no, I'm going out of town this week. And I was like, what? And our little children were sitting at the kitchen island with big old wide eyes. <laughs> going to happen and my husband blurted out that we needed an occasional wife and I was like that is exactly what I need oh my god I can't believe that there isn't a business like that that exists and so and that's funny because most of the time my husband it. would mm -hmm. blurt out we need an occasional wife a wife would be like uh well, I don't I think know, so but I did get a little mad I mean I was initially like oh my god that's so rude I think I do a really good job for the amount of time I you know I'm gone, and he was like, "That's right. We needed a right. We just needed occasional wife. That you're fine. It's right. You're right, honey." And so what I did was I quit my job and started the business, and it's taken off. I ran one ad, and people got it immediately. Everybody was like, "Oh my God! I've been saying for years that I need a wife." And that was it. You know, because people are so, like, your life is just so busy and chaotic and there's mm -hmm. things that are happening and just come in on the dime. And so to have somebody who you can, you know, rely on to come into your home or to help, because you help with just about any and everything somebody would need. I mean, it literally says anything you don't want to do, we'll do it for you. Mm -hmm. And I love that. <laughs> I love that. We basically design and install closets. We'll organize just a closet or we'll organize an entire house. We'll organize your kitchen, your pantry, your garage, your tool shed, your basement. The your junk drawer that you oh, don't even know what's drawer, in there. The <laughs> toy room. Anything that you can think of, we'll organize. Um, we will pack you to get ready for a move. We will move you and then we will unpack you on the other end. And while we're unpacking, we will organize everything. So oh when God. you move into your new house, you move in with this whole new system to keep you organized for the rest of your time in the house. I mean, it's just amazing. People cry when we do that. And we do it in like 48 hours. So they hardly skip a beat. And that sometimes is the biggest piece for people because mm -hmm. I've been in my house for many, many, many years. And then we did a remodel and there are still boxes. I know. 
that have not been unpacked yet. And and I come from and have an organizing background, but yet just life gets so, so busy, busy sometimes that you just don't have the time or you don't take the time to do it. So to have an occasional wife or an occasional husband who can come in and make that happen for you, huge. 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 Life changing. Mm. Mm -hmm. So the piece about purging and getting rid of stuff, mm -hmm. I think a lot of times that's a big issue that people have is like letting go. And so kind of what kind of advice or, you know, when do you direct people, okay, this is time to go ahead and let these items go. Or when you're facing this situation, it's time to, like, what's the advice that you give to people about? Well, if you still have stuff in boxes from when you moved, <laughs> I'm thinking you probably so, don't need yeah, it. Yeah, talking to me right now. <laughs> talk about when is the last time you touch something right okay. so um when uh, you know there's a great trick in the closet where um someone um some organizer on was on the oprah winfrey show and mm -hmm. talked about it and it's like when you hang something up you turn the hanger oh, the other way okay. so yeah. you know you can look at your closet in six months and really see what you wear so it's good to do that sort of thing, to like create a little system to see what you're using and, and not using. I created a system in my closet where I got the very thin hanger so I yes, can put more stuff slim in light. there. Those are good though, I highly recommend them. <laughs> I love them. So that's a good way to kind of teach yourself what you're using and not now using. it's time to take some yes. of the stuff out of the closet. And then we say like if you, like when people have so much stuff that um, it's hidden, that we say what's the stuff that you really love? like. That vase that belonged to your grandmother that every time you went to her house it was on the table and you love it so much but it's crammed in the corn all the way in the back of a cabinet when you have 20 of those vases that you get when you get flowers delivered. Like let's get rid of the dollar vases and let's make room for the really pretty vase that should sit out all the time. And so we kind of really work with people to see what's important to them, when's the last time they touched it, why are they holding on to it, is there somebody else in the family that could use it, um, and you know, and just so really you make can decisions. Find a really good use for something because a lot of times people just don't want to. They come from that mentality of I don't want to waste it, I don't want to throw it away, I don't want to get rid of it. But right. if it's like okay, it can go to a family member or it can go to some charitable organization right. or it can go somewhere where you feel like somebody's going to be able to use it right. that may help people to be able to let go. Absolutely. Or we sell it for them. Or get some money. Yeah. <laughs> there you some go. Money. Especially in the closets. I mean, there's like swap where you can bring your clothes to. There's um, Buffalo Exchange. So there's ways that during the purging process, you can make a little money. Mm, yeah. And that's always a good thing. I know. It always make feels good. Money, go buy you some new stuff. clothes. <laughs> Anything a lot of people maybe hold back from even asking for the help because they're like, I don't want people to see this mess. Like, I don't want them to see. I, I know, get that. We gotten. get a lot of that. Yeah. Um, but once I'm on the phone with them, I say, listen, we are so non-judgmental. We're only here to make your life better and easier. And to, so you can stop thinking about this because it weighs on you. And I can tell when I'm talking to them that it weighs, it weighs on them. And we go to extremes. We go into houses that already look like magazines mm -hmm. and all they want to do is perfect it even more mm -hmm. and then we do extremes to where we do true hoarder houses where I mean literally we have to step over the newspapers wow. and the and you can't see the floor and there you so didn't know that there was a bed in there more than just organizing with people especially in situations where people are hoarders I guess sometimes people don't even realize that they are, are hoarders mm -hmm. but there's a psychological piece to that as well so you go in and you're almost counseling it, yeah it is I mean we sort of can become of part of the family whenever any job that we're on we we're so um, easy to work with and we so love what we do um, that we kind of just really get in there and make it happen for people and um, they're so appreciative and it's the little things like when you put the time it would take you to do it and what your time is worth and probably the money that you save afterwards because you know where things are I mean one of my favorite organizing um, was when we did a pantry and she had 24 bottles of ketchup. <gasps> and every time she like went to the store, she brought ketchup because she couldn't items. see where the ketchup was. Oh my goodness. So it saves you money in the long run. Which it is really does. Ketchup. Right. You pay for our services. <laughs> you pay for our services. <laughs> or my favorite is when we do someone's office and we find checks that people oh. have been written them and they've never deposited them. I had a friend who, mm -hmm. like, we, we had a conversation, he had gone home that night and finally was going through boxes and right. found 40 checks. Yeah. 
for the chest. I know. Sometimes we pay for ourselves. Yes. It's pretty amazing. <laughs> I know. So when you're ready to get your life on track, get your business on track, and remove the clutter, yeah, get an occasional wife or even an occasional husband. You're tuned into Inside Havilah's Corner. We'll be right back. Inside Havilah's Corner. Now, I've lived here very long, but so far, I feel like where I live is a home because I love the city and I love, I guess, the memories that I've had where I live. Okay. So what's one of your fondest memories? Fondest memories? Probably having friends that are from where I'm originally from in Mississippi, having pretty much a house full of them coming and staying for almost a week. It was hectic, but it was like it was really fun. You're remembering the good times. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Inside Havilah's Corner. I'm your host Havilah Malone, and we're inside Havilah's Corner. And right now we're talking to two New Orleans sisters who are the stars of HGTV show Flipping the Block. It has to be so exciting being the stars of a new reality show on HGTV. And uh, you all are going into homes, or going into a home that you're living in, actually, and totally remodeling it as you're living in the space. Yes. I mean, what is that like? We had no idea this was going to be the situation. I was pissed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. Just a little bit. <laughs> and I was hysterical because I knew she was pissed. We need to find out where we're really staying. <laughs> Yeah, not only was it, it was just dirty and gross and disgusting, holes in the walls, no privacy. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Nika was not too happy about it. Not quite the situation you thought you were going to be walking no, into. No, I'm like, okay, joke over. over, bring me to the hotel. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, no, you're staying here. So you get to stay in this dilapidated house um, for an opportunity to win a $50,000 prize by going in, remodeling the house, renovating it, bringing the property value up, and then winning amongst all these different teams that right. you guys are competing against. Yes. And some of the other teams, we've noticed they've been a lot more hands-on. I hired some people. <laughs> That's fine. So what if it costs us an extra thousand to win 5000 uh, Still positive. Right? We did have an edge. However, I mean, doing a room in two, three, four days, I don't care how much experience you have, that is not easy. Mm. You know, and to do it in a competition type setting, you know, because it is controlled on what you can do. So, it was difficult. We had the experience, but it was still hard. <laughs> so, what was it like being there with your sister? And, you know, because not only are you in these tight, confined, very unpleasant, you know, <laughs> circumstances, but then also to be, you know, there with family. Because sometimes, you know, we can kind of rub each other the wrong way. Well, we and Nika, yeah, we've lived together. Oh, because uh, when she was pregnant with her first son, she was on bed rest. And I got to be her lovely care caretaker for seven whole months. Or seven months. Wow! <laughs> and when I say caretaker, she couldn't do anything but lay there. So I cooked clean. Wow. I did it all for her. So this is actually a little bit better because I don't have to do all that. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, actually before the bed was, we stayed with her after the hurricane because our house flooded. So I was literally with Sean for what, about two years? The same one? Yeah, it was quite a while. <laughs> really kind of cemented the sisterly bond. <laughs> <laughs> so lucky for us, they prepared us for that. For that moment. See, so everything happens for a reason. Yeah. Everything happens for a reason. We probably would have killed each other otherwise. Because it, it was hard. <laughs> oh, it was. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was, I mean, but it's just, it's stressful. You're doing all, everything so fast. And you are, you're living in it, you're trying to, it's just not normal for us. We're very particular how we live and how we are, and it was grungy and dirty, and mm -hmm. the tub was nasty, you know. Oh I mean, my goodness. Even after you got grungy, you can't take a bath. It wasn't even like you took a real bath. Right, because you're still dirty. Yeah. You're going to bed dirty. All I remember was watching the show and seeing and lift up the lid on the toilet. Oh. I was just like, I'm about to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was horrific. And I'm like, and you had to live in that. And we, and they, we had to cook there. Ugh. <laughs> so I don't know if y'all call the action of the stove. <laughs> but that was, it was that was wrong. It wasn't close <laughs> at all. Actually, I'm, I'm actually amazed looking at it. I was just looking at that very first one. How did he manage to do that? Because it was really nasty. <laughs> what was it like now watching the show on television? Because there's a difference between being in the experience and then 
watching it as it replays and you're just watching yourself <laughs> in these different situations and things like that. See, when I was watching it, I was thinking, that doesn't even do justice to what we had to do. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, was like, I want you to see more, just see how much how tired and exhausting it was. I, I think we made it look too easy. <laughs> I want that right. pretty bad. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, then it looked worse. <laughs> Um, yeah, it was, you know, it, it was, for me, it felt weird to mm -hmm. see myself on TV and I'm laughing at myself because I make all these weird faces <laughs> when I express myself. <laughs> Apparently, I wear my emotions on my face, so. I always say yes, you do. <laughs> and then y'all banter back and forth with each other and it's so funny, you know, watching you two. And I guess, too, because as sisters, you know, you already have, you know. Yeah. I mean, we're not actors. Exactly. We've never done this. So what you saw, I mean, that's how we are. That was the real deal. Yeah. That's fun. how we are. And it, it's to me, I've heard, you know, that that's funny when we do it, but I never saw it before. And I watch, I'm like, oh, that is kind of entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize we've been do that with each other. It's just like you said, it's just it's who we are. So yeah, I kind of got a kick out of it, especially when I push you with that mattress. <laughs> that was not funny. It was funny. That was hurt me. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I'm gonna get emails, you know, from our families. You know, we're in Ohio. Oh, you know, so we, you know, it's so exciting. It, it, it's just, you know, it's just so unexpected. You do something, and you, it's not, not that it's small, but I didn't really think about how big it really was. And now that it's done, it's like, wow, you know, it's, it's a big deal. You know, it, it's fun. And I think they're happy because, you know, we've been doing this for a while, so I think they're really happy to see us. You know, having I guess a moment to really for people to kind of see what we do and who we are. So mm -hmm. because you have these skills and talents to be able to transform a home, to be able to transform spaces, and, and be able to help people in that way, and now you're able to showcase that talent right. for the world to see. And then you work under some extremely tight timelines <laughs> and some crazy conditions as well, you know, but you ladies are like on it. And even with the first episode that we were able to see, you know, you won, you know, the the prize for that particular yes, episode. Go Team Red, right? <laughs> we don't like to lose. So winning, you know, winning always feels good. You know, we, we're in it to win it, <laughs> as we say. And winning is pretty much everything. That's, what, that's all it's about. <laughs> And you can follow HGTV's Flipping the Block. You can follow Team Red with sisters Anika and Shauna. What do you think it takes to make a house a home? You probably asked that, but, it, but, <laughs> but to make a house a home, I, I think it takes a partnership of whether it's a single mom and kids or a husband and wife and kids. I, I think it takes a partnership of people working together to commit to the same goals to make a house a home. You know, you can live there, but it can be a house, but when you, when you have the same goals and purpose in mind, I, I believe it becomes a home. You're here inside Havilah's Corner, and we're here with an organization that helps people to be able to really fulfill the American dream of home ownership. It's Habitat for Humanity. An organization that's been around since 1983, doing a lot of great work all around, especially here in the city of New Orleans. We're here today with Marguerite A. Stryker. So welcome to the show, Marguerite. Thank you, Havilah. It's great to be here with you. Yes, it is so wonderful to have you, and I mean, your organization, I just want you to, you know, let people know about what it is you all are doing because you do amazing work you know within communities and really helping people to be able to have the, the, the opportunity to have home ownership no matter what their income level is no matter what their situation is as long as they are willing to you know put in some sweat equity yeah definitely that's the biggest part of it I mean you know New Orleans area habitat for humanity has been serving this community for 31 years so we have a long history. We were here, we're maybe most known after Katrina, but we were here a lot before Katrina and we intend to be here going forward. And you know, in our 31 years of service, we have built over 500 homes here, which is a pretty amazing undertaking. Because that is a huge undertaking. You know, and when you think about it, the volunteers are really what makes it possible because you know, the miracle about Habitat is it's 0% interest. So the families that actually get homes through Habitat um, Put in sweat equity, as you mentioned, uh, and then there's a zero percent interest loan, and we use volunteer labor, so that makes it affordable. So typically, a house note for you know a three-bedroom home is comes in under five hundred dollars a month.
including insurance, your termite contract, your flood insurance, and all, all of that, that for under $500. And all of that for under $500. That is huge. And and to be able to give people the opportunity to, like, if you're willing to put in the work, you're willing to not only help yourself, but also help others, then you can have a home of your own. Exactly. I mean, that's the way it works. Every, you know, we call the families our partner families because they really do partner with us. Uh, we work closely with them, and there is a process. Uh, typically, from the time someone makes their first phone call to getting into a home, it, you know, it's about a year and a half to two years. Uh, it depends on the person's situation because they'll put in 350 hours of sweat equity. So that means they come out and they volunteer not only on their own home, but also on other people's homes. Uh, sometimes, you know, someone might not be able to be out on a construction site, so they're able to volunteer inside our resource. So we can always find opportunities to volunteer. And in the course of volunteering, friendships are forged, uh, lasting friendships, and that's one of the most beautiful things about the way this organization works. We you find that you have volunteers that come in from all over the world who are willing to give their time and give their skills and talents to be able to help people. And so tell me, what is it like being able to not only meet all of, you know, these different individuals, but just the atmosphere, you know, they are on a project site? It, it's fantastic. Uh, you know, when you come out to work on a build, you might meet someone from Seattle or Cincinnati or, you know, somewhere from somewhere in Europe. People contact us on a regular basis to come in and volunteer. Sometimes there are small groups, sometimes people do it for family reunions. Last week we had a young lady celebrating her 19th birthday. She's been doing it for, I think, five years and bringing all of her friends out to come and celebrate her birthday by working on a Habitat Home. Mm -hmm. And we have somewhere between 10 and 15,000 volunteers who come and help this affiliate every single year. And that is itself is amazing. 15,000 volunteers. Right. right. And, you know, of course, most people have heard of Habitat. It's an international brand. People know it. But this affiliate, you know, we raise our money locally for the most part. Um, and you know, we do that through a combination of grants and gifts, corporate sponsorships and things of that nature. But it's the volunteers that really drive the whole thing. And what does it mean for the families who are able to actually get into a home where there may have not been an opportunity through traditional financing because of, you know, credit issues or because of, you know, different financial issues. So what does it mean for the families who are able to actually take advantage of this opportunity that you make available for them? Yeah, it, it's huge. And, you know, of course, they make that commitment to partner with us and work through their sweat equities. In many cases, you know, there may be some credit issues. Um, so what we do is we encourage everybody who's interested to go to our website or call us and, you know, habitat-nola.com, have to get the plug in, yeah. um, and to chat with one of our family services representatives because they can counsel them through it. There is a process, uh, but we make it as painless as we can and we'll work with the family. If there happen to be credit issues, we'll work with them. We uh, help mm -hmm. them find appropriate and trustworthy credit counseling organizations. Um, so no one's being taken advantage of. That's a, a huge piece of it, and we'll yeah, work to with be them. put people in the hands of the right resources. Exactly, is a big piece of the puzzle. When you see families getting into a house, I saw little children who had never seen a closet before, because there was a family with three children who were sharing a one-room apartment uh, with dressers and plastic bins for their clothes, and these little girls were just skipping and dancing with delight, just enjoying the space, and it. Um, Home dedications tend to be very emotional. It's the coming together of all of that effort on the part of the family, the work that they've put in, and the commitment they've made. And you know, you'll hear homeowners talk about how surprised they've been that people from all over the world are willing to come and volunteer help and help them achieve their American dream of having it. Your organization is doing some amazing work and we're very privileged and pleased to be able to highlight the things that you're doing and get the information out there more because, you know, more volunteers that come out, more people who are able to benefit from it and it just continues that cycle of building communities. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's a, we call it a virtuous cycle. You know, when you give, you get so much more back than you could ever imagine. So we certainly encourage anyone to call us, go to our website, chat with anyone. We'd love to have someone come out and volunteer. It's a great way to get a sense of the organization and how we work. And, you know, don't be shy. Get to know us. We'd love to get to know you. And coming up next, we're going to be speaking to some of the volunteers all the way from Cincinnati who come out to help some of the New Orleanians through Habitat for Humanity. Inside of a <laughs> And so I'm so excited.
excited to be able to share with you Miss Stephanie Wolf, who's actually one of the volunteers. Her group has been coming down here for over seven years, and four of those years, Steph has been coming down here. And so tell us about the experience, like, you know, why have you chosen to come all the way from Cincinnati down to New Orleans to participate and build homes with Habitat for Humanity? Um, we're the Crossroads Community Church in Cincinnati, and it's a great big church, but we're very missional. We love to go out, and we don't just like to just go and like drop off some money and drop off some food. We love to build relationships, and so we have built some relationships with Habitat. We have built relationships with um, Franklin Avenue Baptist Church. So every year we bring like three to five hundred volunteers over the course of two weeks. Three to five hundred people every year come down. Yeah. Every year. Yeah, and so some of them to run a vacation Bible camp at Franklin Ave. Some of them do Habitat. On Mondays when Habitat doesn't work, we go out to the schools and we paint. And we, yes, the other day we did a goof off on the detention chairs and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> we have another group um, with hands on, and they're reclaiming like a church that's kind of all run down and blight and making it look like nicer for the neighborhood. So we do stuff like that. We also do. Um, family portraits because a lot of people in the storm lost their family photos. Mm. So they go to Franklin Ave and they do free family photos and it's really laid back and people come and they, they just get people looking their best and try to restore some of those memories. So, and we just really... Build each individual up. Yeah, you know? yeah. And we really believe in the hand up. Like, I agree with the habitat. It's better a hand up than a hand out. Yes. So tell me, what's been one of your most memorable experiences from being here and working That is a great question. Um, man, every time I come down here, I come back with something new that I've learned about community. Because, you know, you get so into, like, your life, you know? And I come down here and I start seeing other people's lives. And it helps me kind of be like, oh, I am not the center of the story. <laughs> <laughs> the world does not revolve around me. <laughs> um, but it really like, really helps the centering. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, and this week I got to work with Byron, who's going to own this home. So it was really cool. To, and his sister, she just got you know, her you habitat get to work home. Side by side yes. with the actual homeowner as you all are volunteering yes. and building the house. And that's really great. What do you think it takes to really make a house? A home? Now, that is a great question. I. Uh, recently lost my dog and I'm like my house my home became a house because I don't have anyone in it like I think having a root for your family a place for your community and your family to come together where you can do life together to me that's what makes a home it's not just a place to lay your head you know I can lay my head under a bridge and that's not my home but if I have a place where I feel comfortable and safe and I can invite people and my family can get together and we can have a meal I think that's so we got volunteers like Stephanie and the entire crew from Cincinnati, as well as the Habitat for Humanity who are really helping people make their houses homes. Inside of the song. 